Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in an emergency broadcast session with my very good friend, Dr. Anna Maria. Hopefully, I pronounced her name. I butchered it before. Mahalchia. Is that correct? Wonderful. <laughs> yes, I got it. So you guys, uh, Dr. Anna is an amazing human being. Uh, she's written the book, Light Medicine, which is when I interviewed her almost more than a year ago now about that book. And we ended up talking about all sorts of amazing stuff. And you guys can obviously go on the channel and search her or on the website and search her and watch that podcast. But today she's here to talk about all sorts of new stuff that she's uncovered. And, 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 and honestly, Anna, to give you credit, um, obviously I subscribed to your sub, your sub stack and your message is unreal. I mean, most people can't keep up with the volume of content and the amount of work that you do to, you know, help people that are, awake and aware, as I like to say, in, in humanity. And there's thankfully more than us than there was a year ago at this time. Um, but obviously the newbie awakened people don't really understand because they're in that frustration, justice, you know, revenge. And so it's like, you know, the rest of us are like, yeah, yeah, it's been going on for a long time. It is what it is. But, uh, but you have a lot of new information today. For you guys that don't know her, let me give you her bio real quick. She's a board certified internal medicine physician. She's not some woo-woo chick, bros. With a PhD in pathology and over 20 years of clinical experience, she's also the president of AMM Medical LLC, which is an anti-aging clinic. So she's one of us, dedicated to the reversal of all diseases, and she is the award-winning author of the book, Light Medicine, A New Paradigm, The Science of Light, Spirit, and Longevity, which was my favorite book of 2022. I can't believe that it was literally already two years ago. The, the time is just warp speed. And then she's also the founder of True Blue Medical, which we might want to talk about at some point in this podcast, which is the developer of Blue Light Wellness Wraps. And she has the illustrious credibility of turning me on to Ramtha. And I have to say she was the second person that turned me on to Ramtha because I never listened to the first person and I should have. But I, now my wife and I have read since you introduced me to all of his teachings uh, and man, I mean, like talk about a whole new level of, uh, conscious exploration, but why don't you, why don't you just tell us like today is again, December 6, 2023. Uh, I read your sub stack four days ago now <laughs> and time is just flying. And I was like, Oh God, I got to reach out to her. Um, and at the same time that I read yours, I was given that Christoph guy, Jason Christoph's post, which I sent you to. And, you know, you guys have a similar message about like, it's about to get the lights about to go out on humanity, but why don't you share your research in the last year since you and I spoke of like what you've discovered since the last time we spoke? Yes. Yeah, so, um, I was part of an international team that looked at the vials and we found self-assembling nanotechnology. And then I started looking at human blood unvaccinated. And so I saw the exact same technology self-assembling with biosensors and, uh, all kinds of problems, which led to, uh, also the discovery that these rubbery clots that we know from, from died suddenly now are appearing also in the unvaccinated. And we can prove that by simply drawing, you know, 30 cc's of, of, uh, blood and letting it sit for four hours and it will develop that hydrogel polymer. So, uh, one of the things that I've been basically endeavoring to do is to look for, uh, number one, what exactly is this technology? What are its building blocks? How it is it functioning? And that led me down this entire path of the transhumanist agenda that they want to create human cyborgs and the brain computer interface and uh, to a total control of humanity. And the reason why this is important is obviously, as you know, you know, I have a very spiritual perspective. And then, uh, you know, when uh, Javal Harari is talking about, you know, making the soul and the spirit of humans a thing of the past. Uh, and then I was also looking uh, from the technological side, you know, how would they do that? And then, you know, I went down pathways of really uh, diving deep into the work of Dr. Robert Duncan, who is a former CIA, um, you know, uh, employee who actually wrote the the software program for the AI uh, that is literally the demigod for the deep state. And yeah. that actually happens to, you know, control all and monitor the brains of all of humanity. And so then you get into, you know, the interbody network and all of these different things. And, and so... Um, my role 
goal, in a sense, has been uh, a bit to uh, to bring to awareness just how large the battlefield is, and then to explain to people not just the the technology uh, that's so far beyond what the regular doctors are talking about. Because you know, we actually looked at the vials, and there were no elements of life. Uh, there was you know technological um, uh, aspects like uh, you know. Uh, uh, semiconductor metals, etc. So, it, it, you know, just open the 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 awareness to people that science is so far along compared to what we think it is. And then, you know, what does this mean for humanity uh, as we are, uh, you know, some of us an awakening species, while others are, you know, uh, literally have followed this path of this this this. Uh, um, you know, taking taking the technology and being more controlled, and how does this all work? So that's kind of my work that I've been, you know, bringing to light, and it's it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot to unpack. Well, let me just start asking you some questions, and obviously, we have to still speak in code. Um, so for the people that have chosen the, you know what, and the, obviously the bees after, um. Have they pretty much had their, you know, call it psycho spiritual connection? Let's just call it their connection to the source turned off. So I cannot say that for sure because I know of people who had the shots and they're fighting and they're aware and they're regretful. So I believe there's clearly something happening that allowed them to not, you know, uh, change their personality. But we are understanding that many are, uh, you know, definitely feeling like their personality is changing. And one of the things uh, that, that is very interesting, there was a study out of Poland that looked at the torsion uh, field effect of vaccinated individual who uh, developed this magnetic uh, uh, aspect. Usually, you know, um, Magneticism can be a sort of a paranormal quality. And many healers, for example, have a telekinesis. Right. They're able to bend spoons, things like that. But it turns out that you can measure something called torsion spectroscopy and that the shots were inducing a change in the torsion field and in the literally the antimatter aspect of that individual, which could be the spiritual realm, uh, you know, to, to create this magnetic uh, phenomenon. So this is way over people's heads, but there are... <laughs> are Not this podcast audience, there, there, but there, yes, but yes. There, there are there are elements of science that are so far advanced of yeah. really what we know and that are incorporating so but sort of the closest will be quantum physics and we discussed it right. that the observer effect is definitely something that's very important so they're looking at spin states of electron and how that changes the information state and even thought patterns in human beings and then if you th uh, change someone's thought patterns are you changing the soul and the spirit right. uh you know and and the, the destiny of that human being and i do yeah. believe that that uh, because this has been validated by people like dr robert duncan who actually speaks that people are targeted by technological demons and right. i've validated that with the with the scientific literature shown that they're uh, through graphene which we know right. now is in the Pfizer vial they're creating plasmons and demons which is a low vibratory uh, right. frequency energy field and that's correlating with what I'm seeing in clinical practice where people who never had emotional disturbances, they're all of a sudden, you know, they're anxious, like uh, they, they feel like they're about to die. They hear, uh, have very dark thoughts that they never had before. And, right. and so I'm sounding the alarm on these other levels that I am very well aware of. Well, so this is such an amazing podcast and I'm so grateful to talk to you about this. So we can go very, very deep because as I said, I sent you that book series, which I know you as prolific as you are, you, there's no way you can digest all that because it's eight books and it's again called the wave series and it's from Laura Knight Dizik. And I'm actually conversing with her right now and she's technically in hiding. She's in her early seventies in France and she lives on a chateau and she's out of the limelight now, but everything that she wrote in those books, what she started writing in the nineties is come true 100%. And to what all the things that you just said about where this is initiated from, like who is behind this. I mean, I can tell you based on her research 
and it is fourth density service to self beings. You can call them reptilians. They actually have a scientific name for them. They're called dracomoid beings. But these are basically beings, and they're also humanoid beings in fourth density too. I don't want to confuse people, but they're basically beings of a higher density than third density. And they have what, what we would Anna call like, you know, uh, metahuman type powers and, and, and capabilities and are variable physical. They can become energy and they can become, you know, animate matter, you know, physical beings like we are in third dimension. So we can't even comprehend the levels of technology and the levels of sophistication, as you were saying, of this obviously bioengineered, whatever it is that they're giving to us. But she said, and through her research, that what they ultimately were attempting to do was to enslave third density humanity and control at the shift point, you know, ascension, the shift, whatever this is, they call it, there's actually a, they have a, a harmonic wave convergence type thing where the, the, the wave, and that's the book series title happens. And that point humans are quote unquote, you know, I hate using the word it, but you know, cause it's a religious Christian nonsense, but uh, judged by their vibrational field. And so where you are vibrationally, you advance, you again, ascend to higher uh, density and the higher density for a third density human is service to others fourth, but they, meaning these dracomoid beings and their minions, the gray aliens and all these other things that you see in the UFO abduction phenomenon lore, uh, are wanting to enslave most of humanity before the shift happens. So that even if the shift happens, they have control of them through this Again, call it transhumanism, transmogrification of the DNA, which I know you've written about again for, you know, going back a year. A lot of people have written about it. They were, they're literally trying to change the DNA code in the legal system, right? Like they're trying to create a transhumanist human so that you don't technically, according to the Bill of Rights or the Constitution, actually uh, relate to that in a court of law anymore. I mean, this is all so insane, but like that's literally what's happening. We are, we are, we are being attacked and we've always been attacked by them, but as technology has improved, the veil has thinned, they have ex exerted their forces and their power through. And you again, talked about this when we talked before inserting psychopathic personalities at the top of political institutions political organizations, corporations. I mean, wherever they could put their little minions of power. And these beings are literally hybridized versions of them. They have human DNA, they have their DNA and they're psychopathic. They have no empathy. You know, this, there's so many of these people in this planet right now that don't care about other humans. And they're just in it for money and corruption and power and greed and avarice and every other adjective that you can come up with it. And that's where we are right now. And so You've got like 70% of humanity has no clue. They think that you and I are insane. And then you've got 20% of that 30% that is kind of like saying, you know, what they're saying, they probably on to something. And then there's the 10% of us that's like me and you. It's like, tell me more. Like, holy shit, you're like, you're, you're decoding this. Like, what can we do? But that's, that's where we are right now. Yes. And so what people need to understand is that that much of what people think is real really has been a lie, <laughs> similar to sort of like the Matrix movie. Right. And so we have people who are, for example, doctors like myself, you know, we got an education, but most of what we were taught is not real. Yes. And science is way further yes. ahead. than that. And then we have this whole aspect about history. So, you know, obviously there's biblical history, but a lot of those scriptures have been tampered with throughout times. And then, you know, if you really look at the ancient civilizations of Sumer, of the Anunnaki race, yeah. and you understand that that uh, that the the human race was engineered, and right. that even you know the uh, the our genetic code has a mathematical sequence in it. That is clearly it's called the Wow signal, and it shows extraterrestrial origin so if you're human you're an extraterrestrial deal with it and so basically what happens is then we have the history of eisenhower and we have the secret meetings we have the suppression of the ufo technology the 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 um you know the connection to these extraterrestrials and some of them who are already living on earth some are from other places i mean uh, right. you know the, the idea that somebody thinks that uh, there's 11 billion planets and 
this in this universe that we're alone. And we're I mean, at the top of the food chain. <laughs> you're, you're just like, oh my God. So, um, so in terms of understanding that where did this technology advancement come from? You know, we were ho horse and buggy like a hundred years ago, exactly. and now we're at AI smartphones, sure. and we are going sure. to merge merge into the metaverse right where did this technology come from where it's reverse engineered from you know some of these entities and the contracts that were made were you know happened with the uh, original alien abductions uh you know the 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 uh, bioengineering hybridization all of these things are, are present and even the pentagon is now you know releasing some of the documents but the my point is that if you look at who these individuals are, uh, you know, they have their puppets that that are obviously, all, we know now that all of the governments are bought, all the judicial system, and it is right. through the whole honey bucket blackmail, you know, Epstein likes after right. tri, uh, uh, ch uh, child trafficking, satanic ritual abuse, but then you have to ask, well, who's above them? And then, then you get into the secret societies, the right. Vatican, the Jesuit right. orders, right. you know, and right. then above, who's above them? Well, the serpents, then you, the brother, they all, they well, all fall it's, in it's, the brotherhood. It's not just the serpents, so yeah, there there's are more. the serpents, there's more. but there's then more. you have dark AI. And yeah, you exactly. Have, and, Which and they artificial. probably created. They probably created the dark AI. You're right. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but there are more. And we, we, we have to say that there are mantid beings. Look, Dr. David Jacobs, if you're familiar with his research, I mean, this guy wrote four books on the abduction phenomenon. He is a Cornell educated professor. He had nothing to do with ufology and he wrote all these books. And I was reading these books like in the early two thousands. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? And he was always the only guy that was saying, you know, because you remember the the new age, the CIA, they they, they contain the CIA, the the alphabet agencies contaminated the new age. You know, the, the, they started making the new age like all oh, their space brothers and they're benevolent and they're here to help us and you know they're they're only here for the good, you know, to to, to see humanity rise and to, and to ascend and all this stuff. And and Jacobs was uh, investigating two thousand professionals, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, accountants who had been experienced this quote unquote abduction phenomenon. And his conclusion was always, this is not benevolent. This is the most Machiavellian thing. They are replacing the human race. They are literally replacing the human race. They are doing this transhumanism. Anna, this is in the two thousands. He was talking about this. And again, we, you and I spoke about this. You wrote about this in your book in, in 2020. The dark side, whoever they are, which we just, you know, categorize and, and hierarchy classified, they decided that they were going to change the genome by force of will. And it was, you're going to get it, you know, the, you know what, or you're not. And if you don't, it doesn't matter because we're going to contaminate the planet anyway with graphene oxide and aerosol spraying and contaminate the food. And they're doing all these different things. And the reality is, is now the entire planet is this giant, like, I mean, I hate saying echo chamber, but it's like this terraformed, homogenized, you know, get, get call it, you know, AI, reptilian, whatever you want to call it, like giant hodgepodge of chemicals. And I don't know if anyone's even been able to escape it, whether you even chose to be or not. So first of all, let me go back to what you said. Not all interaction and contacts are are dark. And yeah, I'm there's a good people. Of course, there's I, angelic I, beings. Just let me speak. So so I'm a contactee. I've been a craft. I have seen extraordinary things and extraordinary beings. And there are absolutely entities who are on the side of humanity. Of course. But but divine law says you cannot interfere right. in in the evolution of an inferior species, you have to allow their own evolution. What happened with the fallen angels is that, well, they came down here and they seriously interfered because they actually, you know, hybridized with humans and yeah. that was never supposed to happen. Right. So, but ultimately I think it's, it is, it's important that 
what is this about in in regards to what are we to do and the 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 spiritual awakening aspect is also one of understanding this what you were saying the vibration or the frequency of our thought so we live in a universe that we create by our thought absolutely we are divine creators and that the more you are engaging in negative thoughts in hate in jealousy in in envy in in all of these things it's all about just you and your paycheck you are actually empowering what is going on on a planetary scale because as above so below as right. then so without so what that means is that if you want to see a change outside you have to be it and what we have been seeing is that we've seen extraordinary cowardness we've seen extraordinary lies even by people in the freedom movement for example who are <laughs> denying the presence of nanotechnology when this is you know out in the open everywhere in the literature and they're just kind of turning the blind eye so if you if that is your intent that you're portraying into the quantum field that is what you're going to get you cannot have a breakthrough if the breakthrough doesn't happen here i've been trying to tell that to well people said. but 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 it's it's so so one of the aspects is that some of the new age community for example a lot of them were just like well we're just all all gonna sentence all lovey-dovey well no it's not you have to fight unconditional you, love love and you, light i'm gonna send you love and light they're gonna go away love and light so you have to fight in your communities you have to be out there and this is why you know i write bazillion sap stacks a day and i drive my subscribers nuts because i'm trying to say it's like look people here's the evidence here is what we need to do and obviously you cannot rely on the courts because they're corrupt you cannot rely on the government and by the way it's been shown that we are so filled with these nanoplastic polymers which are the technology and biosensors that even us who try to keep ourselves as clean as we can are fully contaminated so unless you are uh you know as a collective working to address this issue you're gonna have mass casualties and this is exactly what i'm seeing i see turbo cancers in the unvaccinated now at a rate unprecedented and in, in 30 years in the healthcare field i haven't seen that where people are diagnosed and they're dead in eight months or less and and this happens in young people uh same thing with these rubbery clots i'm doing what yeah. i can and the fda is pulling everything that 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 could be an antidote they just pulled all the peptides uh, the longevity peptides they're trying to i know all classification EDTA. too i know so, so 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 what i'm saying is we are at such a high-pitched battle war and and you know what i'm saying is that these people that understand like you and i we have to also have conversation and we have to bring the science you know into this uh this conversation because guess what the doctors don't want to talk about this and you're not going to get help from them because they can keep talking about you know spike protein or you know a nicotine patch is gonna help you from becoming a transhuman i'm sorry it ain't oh my god you're i love you <laughs> you're so you're so passionate and far more insane than me but we're both insane but you have to be insane to be living in an insane world i mean everything you said i resonate with and i'm glad you corrected me because it sometimes can get overwhelming when you start looking at the parasitic and dark side but yes there are very amazing benevolent angelic higher dimensional higher density forces that are here and you're right you serve based on your vibration if you are a kind peaceful again i hate to say that because we were just saying you can't be all love and light but if you treat others with the golden golden rule you give and you serve without expectation or attachment you are working in the vibratory field of the benevolence and the angelics and whatever you want to call it. But you're right. I mean, we are in a battle here in the third density right now. And again, there's so many people that are just unaware. And I, I think, you know, this Anna, cause we talked about this on the last time that you and I spoke, but so many people are so caught up in just surviving and just paying their bills, you know, making sure their car payments, making sure there's food on the plate for the kids. As, as you know, the American nuclear family is destroyed. Majority of kids are growing up in single family households now, whether it's a male or female, uh, they've destroyed everything. I mean, this has been a full scale 
massive all system all you know system onslaught from food air water chemicals i mean it's almost impossible i mean i lived in mexico we haven't talked but i lived in mexico for 10 months and they don't spray the skies in mexico all the food in mexico is farm to table there's not the contamination i mean i've been living back in florida now back in the matrix and you know usa the usa inc in the last six five and a half months and i can't eat as well here as i was eating in mexico and to even say that like most people don't understand but when you know it's again it's the frog in the boiling pot the average american has no idea that they're even under attack they're just getting fatter and sicker and poorer as inflation increases i mean I know we're, we're we're stating the obvious to ourselves, and obviously my audience is pretty sophisticated because I talk about this all the time. But like, at this point, what are the options for people who are aware of this? What can we do at this point? So first of all, I believe that our power lies in our soul, and that's yes. exactly what they want to destroy. Yes. So what does that mean? That, that you start living your soul no matter what. So. Um, you know what that means for me is I speak the truth no matter what the backlash and I get backlash all the time. And, and that, that truth is in line with what I know inside of me. And it has literally sometimes nothing to do with the outside because the outside is so crazy. You know, I've had a yeah. couple near death experiences and I understand that we don't die. And so literally what I have to live is my spiritual self here, uncorrupted by what is the antichrist within me, my own personality, you know, and my own survival and all of that. I mean, I have, I've just said, you know, this is not how I want to be. I actually had this thought, think about this. So Satan, was once God's most beloved angel. And what happened? What happened was that the humans were created and Satan started to get, uh, you know, jealous of all of the, uh, you know, let's say uh, the the two bahu about these, this creation. And he got jealous. And I was contemplating the emotion of jealousy that drives you all the way to hatred from being the most angelic being the most beautiful the most beloved and i was thinking about wow you know what is it that i can contribute to this fight is exactly you know to the the self-awareness of these aspects the self-healing if every single one of us would be doing that what kathy o'brien clearly stated it's like look an enlightened mind cannot be hacked because the vibratory frequency of love isn't an emotion it's a state of being that is way above where they live and then but literally you are living in in a different dimension even though you're interacting with this with this one and i believe that that is necessary that we are that we're evolving uh ourself inside so that the outside is changing and that we can continue to facilitate that shift yeah how do i respond to any of that <laughs> that's so awesome i mean yeah i mean I, I'm in agreement. I mean, I, I, when people ask me, like, what are we to do? I say, you focus on what you can control, which is your vibration. That's the most important thing that you can have in your life right now. Like, are you living in resonance? You know, are you reacting in fear or responding out of love? And you have the ability to do that. You know, obviously you can stop buying from the beings or the entities or the corporations that are destroying us. I mean, you can, you know, obviously vote with your pocketbook. I mean, you can't be involved in the U S political system anymore because it's co-opted. Right. But like the re the reality is, is that you can live a resonant life and make resonant choices based on the frequency that you exist in. And, and, and again, most people, they have, you know, their, their wife or their, their husband or their children, or, you know, the people that they influence in their little circles and stuff like that. And I think, Anna, it, you know, it's important that people nowadays realize that if the person that is in your family or in your circle or whatever is not vibrating at the frequency that you are, you don't have to stay attached or committed to those people. Because again, you know, again, frequency attracts and, and, and you don't want to be around people that are vibrating 
you know, far beneath you. And it's not a judgment or a condemnation. It's just a statement of fact. And I think a lot of people today are not choosing, like you were saying, to stay in frequency bubbles that are of like mind and are, you know, just call it resonance. And, 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 and where you really get into a problem is when you're not hanging around people with like mind. And there's a, the good news is there's a lot of people now that have woken up and, and, and you can really find people, uh, you know, even not just on the internet. I know you remember just a couple of years ago, it was like very difficult to talk to anybody about this stuff, but now there's enough people out there. And I think it's very important that you do start creating quote unquote, your community or your tribe of like-minded people. And, and the other thing to understand about reality is that we are in this warfare that is literally affecting all of us from every level of existence. Yes. So imagine in a way that that right now behind you, the earth is collapsing in calamity, right. earthquakes and whatnot. And your ability to change mindfully and in every way to adapt to this new uh, new existence that will so now you have to expand your knowledge you have to know what is the level of warfare uh where is it all coming from you know what should you do should you get out of the cities absolutely how do you get your clean water how to get do you get away from emf uh you know how do you uh get away from potential quarantine camps what are you going to do about the next uh you know pandemic that they're going to uh you know put out there so you're the convenience lifestyle is literally making you vulnerable. You know, I got rid of my iPhone completely, you know, and, and I, I secured all of my, my, um, you know, by security computer stuff, networking and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it took a lot of effort to learn all of the different aspects of it, yeah. but it's like, are you willing to fight for your survival? Because what's going to happen and what we're already seeing is that mass casualties are going to go up. The true seekers you've seen, for example, the whistleblower from New Zealand, uh, you know, he's talking about the, the, the vax effect and bam, he's in jail, right? Now, Fulmic is in jail. You know, many people are, are really, really being attacked in different countries. And you can see this battle is high pitched. If you don't call this a war, well, it is. And, yeah. and uh, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's important for people to really recognize that in terms of your detoxification should be a routine as if you're going on your battlefield. That's what it, it, it needs to be in terms of importance and people are saying you know i'm fear mongering by you know bringing out these 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 uh number one the information but i'm also saying it's like you know there are possible things that you can do uh and but ignoring it isn't going to help you right right i mean again ignorance is bliss 70 percent of people still have no idea they're just caught up in their mode of survival and paying their bills and you know, their rent and their mortgage and their bill, you know, whatever it is, you know, again, just living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I saw statistics the other day. It's ne There's never been more people in the, his in the history of the world, really the United States that are more broke. Like the average person right now has 75 to $85 in their bank account. It's like they literally live from check to check they're, they're on just a meager existence. And if they have any kind of calamity in their life, and again, this has all been created, you know, that this is all by design. I mean, they, they have created a society that was designed to fail. It, it was designed to collapse. There, there was no way that a system of corporations, which has absolutely no egalitarian uh, aspect of existence, right? I mean, a, the very nature of a corporation is to outcompete and destroy the competitor. That's what a corporation does. There is no unilateral or purpose. There's no like equipment entity. There's nothing. It's literally one person wins and then they catabolize everybody else. And the and the and the the losers starve. That's what corporations are. Yes. And if you look at, you know, the technocratic um, transhumanist satanic agenda is clearly one of number one, depopulation, number two, to total global control, total global mind control. Why is the aspect of the mind control so important is because, yeah. again, we create our own reality. If they are able to, you know, modify our thoughts, then we are living their matrix and their uh, their reality. And ultimately, this whole transition into the metaverse is the greatest blasphemy against uh god because basically we are already plugged into god into the you know uh, uh mind of forever we can download anything we want 
uh, you just have to use this brain. You're using only less than 10% of it. So what is going on with the other 90%? And what really is that optimal human capacity? How do you get uh, to the level of an ultra human and an evolved being, what, uh, what used to be called a master? Well, that is the developing of mind and the understanding yeah. that you are a spiritual being was forgotten that you are. And this is, you know, uh, uh, where, uh, as we discussed before, you know, the training of Rantha is, is very, very useful. And and so I think that that people just need to make their choices. And then we have to uh, uh, be in a state of allowing. You know, I've had people who literally have left me behind because I was trying to help them and warn them and, and say, it's like, look, uh, this is, you know, um, this is not the right path that you're taking, but ultimately I had to learn to allow and let go and, and, yeah. uh, and, and move on. And so I think that that's, that's all also the other thing about, you know, if people are unwilling to change with what is the knowledge and how it is evolving, how rapid it is, then, then, you, you know, you cannot try and drag people behind. You're going to lose yeah. all of your energy and you're all, uh, you're, you're going to be lost in the fight. So the, you talk about ramp up, and I know time doesn't matter. You know, time is this era. Uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, it's it, it's irrelevant, but it, it it doesn't even exist outside of this time and space. And so it's like in the ramp, the teachings or the books, you know, we read them all. You know, he gives a time. He does give a time. He gives 2041 as the end, you know, when the armies of the good guys and the ba bad guys and, you know, the earth ascends or the earth planetary ascension, frequency change or vibra vibratory shift, whatever you want it. But I mean, do you see, cause again, time doesn't really matter. And, and what we do know is this is a timeline war, right? This is like literally the good guys and the bad guys are going forwards and backs to backward to prevent the full blown dystopian, you know, technocratic, uh, transhumanistic enslavement of this dimension. So it's like, do you see us lasting, you know, 18 or 19 more years? I mean, I don't personally, like if you put a gun to my head, I mean, I, I don't know how this planet can go another 18 to 19 years at the current pace, but I guess it could, if it was just blasted into nothing. And it was like, uh, you know, what's that movie with Viggo Mortensen, the road. It was like this just dystopian apocalyptic, landscape i mean i mean is that i mean what do you think i know it's an opinion question but what do you think well so what i'm definitely concerned about is how um what i'm observing in human blood is accelerating yeah and, and yeah. that the military and this is um celeste solemn discussed it had talked about in 2018 that by 2025 no natural human will be alive and my concern is that that certainly you know this this uh, this polymer synthesis synthetic biology uh, that i'm seeing you know it sort of looks like it so what i'm working on are are the solution to uh, to this and and really saying okay look I chose to be here. I get that. I'm a spiritual divine being that has chosen this time. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm here. <laughs> I know, and right? Then, like that's what I say all the time. Like we consented to be here. We know that, but like, what were we thinking, Anna? So, so then the next step is, well, what are my gifts? My greatest right. gifts of how can I help number one, this earth that is a conscious being that's being destroyed as we speak through, not through, you know, greenhouse effect. No, they're destroying it with, with the geoengineering Climate stuff change. and, and weather warfare and all of that and trying to fuse uh, every cell and every micro with synthetic biology. They are doing this yeah. so what i can do is the most powerful thing is to say no and just stand up exactly. regardless you can take this body you can do whatever but you cannot break my spirit and as yeah. long as i stand on that premise i believe that no nanotechnology no 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 nothing will get to me yeah well, and then go, go ahead. ahead keep going no you go you go so 
so and then in in the meantime it's like what can i do to evolve the the uh the morphogenic field of humanity with knowledge uh to to move forward you know and and it, it, the more sometimes i i tell you sometimes i say outrageous things because i know it's gonna like tie people in or not and they're gonna get all you know revved up about it but you know what if it's gonna make them think uh, and they're gonna maybe change their mind, then there was something good about it, you know, because I am so out of the box. I don't really belong to the doctors. I don't really belong to the new agers. I don't belong anywhere. But so it's like the more boxes of, uh, of mental constriction we can blow up is the, the more we can move forward into also a terrain of solutions, you know. If you're denying and you're keeping your eyes closed, you're gonna just, die in the morass you're you're a child of the light that's the box so um and honestly like i mean we're either pleiadian arcturian lyran you know we're, we're 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 higher density beings that again as you said volunteered for this mission we consented to be here we chose our parents so um, if you know anything about Ramtha's teaching, never ever say I am from the light because there's way more beyond that. And, true. and so so just uh, I think true. people are misled at the light. No, I mean that's actually a really good point because Lucifer, aka, was the light bringer. And so they, as you know, the fallen angels appear as angels of light to that's deceive. Right. That's to deceive. exactly right. Good point. So, yeah, I'm so, not an angel of light. <laughs> right. So, but I mean, like when I say of light, you know, I mean like in the absence of darkness is light, right? So it's like whatever we are as benevolent beings, a service to other souls, you know, we emanate from what I would call, you know, higher density awareness, which again, you know, most people would just assume is light. But yes, I understand. I'm very familiar with the ramp, the teachings, probably not as much as you are, but, but, but I understand, but I, I want, I mean, that's kind of the question is like, where i mean is is, is ramtha still showing up and talking you know in your quote unquote circles about like now i mean obviously i've read the books but the books are older i mean is he, are they still channeling him now i mean i obviously i get the text messages that there's all sorts of courses going on but i mean are they still doing like active sessions Yes, and I can't really speak for Rentha School of Enlightenment. I have to be very, very careful about sure. that. And and yeah. you know, uh, so I really want to honor that. But but yeah. you know, I think that there's that there's definitely information that can be very helpful to people in yeah. terms of how to create reality, and that is absolutely still going on and still available, and and uh, has been very helpful to me because the experiential yeah. uh, of the fact of how do you create reality and and how do you actually maneuver, you know, the, that you are a spiritual being? It's not just about banging and bombing and arming. It's like, no, 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 you know. So so the whole idea of actually putting you to the test, it's like, you know, can you create a reality and see it through? Uh, yeah. And you do this through, uh, through very rigorous disciplines. And that's what he has taught. And thank God he's taught me because... Uh, you know, that this is one way of how I've, I've been able to maneuver what I've gone through. So I think that that this is a training of the mind uh, with very specific application. It's not just about reading some books and absolutely it's still going on. Yes. Can you, I don't know if you're allowed to share this, but because you mentioned it, you, 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 you openly volunteered that you're a contactee. Is that something that you can share and talk more about? Or is that something that's me and you speak off air. Uh no, so I, what what happened was that I I wanted to create an experience uh, to meet my future self, and uh, and in my book I describe how one night I was taking through a torsion field through the uh, roof of my house, and I actually went into a spacecraft and I saw a very very advanced being uh, and uh, and some extraordinary technology, and I realized that. 
that uh, that that experience that I had created and wanted uh, that that this being in the future has extraordinary knowledge. So what I have done and what I described in the book is to continue to entangle yeah. with that reality and download information. My book was a download from that future in terms of what was, you know, the greatest potential outcome of of how I could evolve. And and it is that future. That is what Ramtha was saying. It's like, you know, look, we we are divine human beings. We live out of times. So your future self already exists. And Jay-Z right. and I taught people how to create your future life. And uh, you know, I described all of this. So so my my future self is is teaching me here. People are sometimes saying, you know, how in the world do you know all this stuff? Well, I focus and I get the idea as a download. Right. And then right. I go and I research these things and there it is. And so, uh, so to me, um, you know, that is an absolute real reality. It's more real to me than what I'm living here, even though people think I'm crazy. Right? Not talking so, about it. I, so I a hundred percent agree with you. And I, I've come to the not believe the knowing that all advances in human information, let's just call it information systems are from downloads from the future self, the higher self, right? F various fractals of the higher self or your future self. And again, the whole wave series of books is her getting downloads from what they call the Cassiopeians from sixth density, which is her in the future, a, a, a version of her in the future. It's again, it's fascinating. It's interwoven the way it's interwoven, but uh, I mean, that's, that's literally the way it is. You, you know, you have to live from your higher self expression. You know, how do we, how do I live from my higher self expression again, by the things that we already talked about, right. You know, by, by serving, by living in creation, not consuming, you know, the dark side is the consumption. But you, you know, can't we, serve and resent it. You cannot I, serve and be yeah. a victim about it. Yeah. If, <laughs> if it is in your own soul to do so, and you right. are 100% aligned with your intent, that's great. That's, that's what beautiful. I've been trying to say about the yeah. freedom movement. It's like right. you cannot speak up for truth and freedom and then lie because your <laughs> intent your intent is not forward and you actually have a kink in your armor. So you're always going to be sabotaged by, by, you know, your actual ulterior motive and intent. And so yeah. uh, this is what is so important. And in regards to, for example, speaking about what we sp spoke of, what is the future of a humanity right now in this nodal po point of history? If, if um, procreation has been destroyed and if, if, in terms of the, the uh, brain computer interface, if everybody is uploaded into AI, will the future still exist? Or is there a timeline where some of us warriors who understand this knowledge really start fighting and right. we win a war to the degree that there is going to be a timeline where there's still biological, true, enlightened and, and awakening. The, in my book, I talked about AI is not the greatest future of humanity. No. So if there's infinite parallel timeline. We have to work at, to live on the timelines in which we can have the future that we've seen or dreamed of. And I still beautifully said, I, I still think that people like us can still create that reality and maybe just end up on that timeline anyway. But, you know, maybe there's just a complete, you know, convergence and a divergence, a, 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 a bifurcation. And the people that are in that re resonance creating that timeline of biological human divine organisms create that reality. And those that are wanting to, you know, hook up to the metaverse and be uploaded into the cloud, create their own. I mean, I mean, you can see two simultaneous and parallel realities diverging here on this planet. And maybe that's Hannah, that's what the new earth really is. The new earth is created out of the beings that choose that timeline or that path again through their actions through their conscious will and intent and those that aren't go the other path i mean i can really honestly see that it's difficult right now where we are in this version of 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 uh, human existence as you said i mean it's it's getting dark but it's very possible that if you maintain your vibration of resonance and you continue to do the things and you said you consciously through your conscious will and alignment of integrity um that you could 
you know, quote unquote, break out of here. And maybe that's just the way it happens. I mean, maybe that's really the way it happens. Because the one thing that you and I haven't spoken about is, and I know we know, you know, that there are no saviors and white hats coming, but we definitely know that there are angelic beings and higher density beings who are observing things. I mean, maybe that's just how it really ends up is that you eventually get to a place where, again, this wave comes through, call it ascension, call it the shift, whatever. And based on your frequency, you graduate. And graduation is the new earth. I hope so. I'm ready to graduate. <laughs> Because you and I don't want to go where the other place is. Well, that's what's funny is the Lake of Fire, which is obviously Christian eschatology in the wave books, the quote unquote dark, you know, fourth density service to self beings say that it's their fourth density reality of like pure service to self. So what if that's what that really was? They're just back then they had no way to explain it because they didn't understand extra ter- extraterrestrial or higher density existence or any of that stuff. But what if, quote unquote, the lake of fire burning in hell, which we know hell doesn't truly exist, but the lake of fire is like a fourth density or a higher density of just pure evil, of service to self like existence. I mean, can you imagine how horrible that might be? I think I think what's really interesting. So I subscribe that I've lived before and that I will live again. So in incarnation, I've been everything. And uh, uh, in terms of what is wisdom in the soul, is really meaning that I've been every you know horrible thing on this planet, right. including self-serving, including yes. everything that we see out there, right? So once that is known, then it's like it doesn't have a draw. You know, people right. try to bribe me. I've tried all right. kinds of things. It's like I'm not interested. You know. Right. So, so the whole idea is just, you know, that yes, we are evolving to a different level and saying, okay, you know, I, I've already made that known. I want something different. My, my whole agenda of, of why I've really, it's not so much, I don't want to enslave other human beings. I think that, you know, wherever they are, that's fine. But, uh, but to see nature and, and uh, to see all of creation and its beauty, I mean, be completely modified and suffer and, and, uh, you know, that's really been something for me. It's like, well, I was supposed to be a caretaker of this right. garden and look at this mess, you know. And so so my my awareness of what is it like to walk back in the Garden of Eden as a as a as someone who is creating as the gods used to the Anunnaki, etc. You know, they came on these missions to evolve life. Well, I want to yeah. do that, too. And maybe, you know. Maybe we have to go through total destructions. I hope not. Uh, uh, and this is why we have to, uh, you know, we're, we're here for this battle and for this change. It's beautifully said. I mean, I'm going to put a gun to your head right now. And I'm going to ask no, you don't. how much longer a, a proverbial Internet gun. How, how much longer does, does this density in its current form have? I have no idea. Give me a guess. I mean, do we have two years? I mean, I'm hopeful you're going to tell me, Jay, where I'm breaking out of here in two years or less. <laughs> you know, all I can say, see, the thing is that that people are wanting an answer in time. Yeah, there's no time. Yeah. But our spirit, you know, lives in that in that no time space. And eternal. that's where all the solutions are. And that's where a shift can happen like this. I mean, instantly. So yeah. so the miracles uh, do not lie in time. And right. that's the and and that's the the problem. So I I sort of consider myself. Remember when they talked about it's about the journey, Frodo. You know, uh, and and you don't know when you arrive. We don't know how right. far are we from Mordor to put the Ring of Power into that volcano. We don't know if we're this close or if we're still. You know, but but we have to continue, and uh, and. And, and keep the journey going, keep the body going as best as we can, make sure that our mind stays forward and, and, and uh, the vibratory frequency and the power of our light, may that, uh, you know, ignite other souls to also let their light shine because really this is what it is about. Beautifully said. Um, you said you brought it up, so I have to say it that you know the scene in the uh, Return of the King when uh, not Frodo, but um, it's the other hobbit, uh, Mary says to Gandalf, he says, 
the cutoff. Is this the end? Is death? And he says, oh, no, Mary. Death is not the end, for it is only the beginning. Death is the beginning of a new path, one which we all must take. <laughs> That's right. And and so this whole idea is we have, we are in extraordinary times. My goodness, we're in biblical times. We are in the times of the book of the revelations. Okay. It cannot be any more extraordinary than that. What are we going to do with the time that was given to us? And right. every moment we have to decide that. And, and, and I think that, that that's our chance, our gift, our, who knows, you know, imagine if humanity is going to survive at some point you know there's going to be history books uh, written about you know us crazy people who went against all of this entire system and and we somehow you know made a breakthrough so i think to envision that future i want to see a time where you know ultimate healing and longevity is available to human i want to see a time where the machines that are controlling the minds of all of humanity and this gridlock are turned off what would yeah. that be like we'd be levitating by now <laughs> you know uh, totally so no doubt and and you know what about interstellar space travel and you know contact with extraordinary beings and phenomenal science i want to see all of that so i'm gonna live until i see it it's amazing i love you your energy is so amazing i gotta meet you in person you have the most amazing energy you're like me but um i mean this has been such a profound a literally phenomenal podcast um i'm gonna move this to the top of the the top of the the top of the line of my podcast queue, and I'm gonna attempt to get this out. I, it, it's up to my team to get this out this month, and I probably will do it. But um, just before I let you go, because I always love talking to you, I mean, just give a couple of sentences of instruction, you know, solution type oriented stuff, and I know you will. But uh, just just for people going into new, year, you know, into the 2024. Let, let's just say this runs at the end of this month. And, and so this will be your like soliloquy of like, this is, if you're a resident soul, this is what you should do going into 2024. Yeah, so people can definitely, you know, they can visit my Substack. I've talked about all of these antidotes and I'm doing a lot of testing with stuff because I think what's really important is that stuff actually works. You cannot just go out there and say, I have the new antidote for nanobots and then you don't have <laughs> any type of, uh, you know, proof about it. So what I'm endeavoring to do is, you know, I mix new new uh, um, <coughs> supplements with, with things like, you know, blood. I see how it works. I look, do the research. And so far on the top of the list are things like EDTA methyl and blue is a new front runner you know i've really shown how well that actually binds to the hydrogels and is able to you know prevent the uh, the clot formation things like uh, now the essential oils i'm doing testing with them that's phenomenal they do break down styrofoams they and do. plastics uh so I've, I've just written about that and uh, vitamin c obviously you know good nutrition uh kick-ass attitude and you know emf protection Protection. I mean, all of those things. It's like, just imagine your most outrageous self and just start living it. And if you do that, you know, your life force will propel you forward into that reality. And don't worry about who hates you and who thinks you're crazy and all that. You know what? Who, who knows if they're going to be alive in the next couple of years? So just think about that. Think about that, that, that the entire establishment, all these people who, who have the shots and now the unvaccinated who are ignoring the threat of nanotechnology which is clearly the front runner of what's what's uh, changing people uh who knows if those voices will still be there you know yeah. do you uh bonus question final question do you think that the quote-unquote unveed which is all of us of course does it even matter at this point because of the contamination and the cross-contamination and just the environment i mean obviously you know that our friend bill g is throwing a lot of this stuff on the cover of apples and all this stuff now you know they're injecting it into the food the artificial dye and industry and the food supply i mean does it even matter at this point do you I mean, it's a bonus question but what are your thoughts on that I, I seriously think it matters, you know, and I'm extremely sensitive because after I was targeted, you know, I, I, yeah. I had a lot of issues. And if I don't de decontaminate, I feel it. I feel I don't I feel physically unwell. Uh, I can feel the brain fog. And it's it's you know, they are really, really just bombarding us from every yeah. aspect. And that's what I see in my clinic. And like I told you, you know, I see the unvax with turbo cancers. I see all kinds of, you know, cognitive decline. I see personnel 
personality changes where people have you know anxiety depression all kinds of problems so i believe that if 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 it absolutely matters you have to limit exposure as best as you can and detox and support the system as much as you can i do so at a rate where i'm 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 literally i feel that uh, at this point it's maxed out because if you go beyond uh, you know what else are you going to do i have no idea but uh, uh, i i think people need to be very very aware and they have to fight for their life yeah i mean that's that's what it is i mean again thank you so much for coming on today amazing so you guys i just posted her but follow her and subscribe to her sub stack it's very cost efficient i mean she also has a lot of free content she is an amazing true resonant soul not a freedom fighter <laughs> Because that you that movement is co-opted, corrupted. I mean, it's all COINTELPRO. Pro. That's a whole other podcast for another day. But again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on. So again, people support Dr. Anna, subscribe to our Substack, and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.